Thought Vibration, or The Law of Attraction in the Thought World. Book by William Walker Atkinson. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1906. This is a great audiobook production created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 6. How to Become Immune to Injurious Thought Attraction. The first thing to do, fear thought, strong expectancy a powerful magnet, the man who fears, how to overcome the habit of fear, a waste of time to fight negative thought by denying it, the right. Mental attitude, setting new vibrations in motion, the conquest of fear the first important step, the positive will prevail. The first thing to do is to begin to cut out fear and worry. Fear thought is the cause of much unhappiness and many failures. You have been told this thing over and over again, but it will bear repeating. Fear is a habit of mind which has been fastened upon us by negative race thought, but from which we may free ourselves by individual effort and perseverance. Strong expectancy is a powerful magnet. He of the strong, confident desire attracts to him the things best calculated to aid him, persons, things, circumstances, surroundings, if he desires them hopefully, trustfully, confidently, calmly. And, equally true, he who fears a thing generally manages to start into operation forces which will cause the thing he feared to come upon him. Don't you see, the man who fears really expects the feared thing, and in the eyes of the law it is the same as if he really had wished for or desired it. The law is operative in both cases, the principle is the same. The best way to overcome the habit of fear is to assume the mental attitude of courage, just as the best way to get rid of darkness is to let in the light. It is a waste of time to fight a negative thought habit by recognizing its force and trying to deny it out of existence by mighty efforts. The best, surest, easiest and quickest method is to assume the existence of the positive thought desired in its place. And by constantly dwelling upon the positive thought, manifest it into objective reality. Therefore, instead of repeating, I'm not afraid, say boldly, I am full of courage, I am courageous. You must assert, there's nothing to fear, which, although in the nature of a denial, simply denies the reality of the object causing fear rather than admitting the fear itself and then denying it. To overcome fear, one should hold firmly to the mental attitude of courage. He should think courage, say courage, act courage. He should keep the mental picture of courage before him all the time, until it becomes his normal mental attitude. Hold the ideal firmly before you, and you will gradually grow to its attainment. The ideal will become manifest. Let the word courage sink deeply into your mind, and then hold it firmly there until the mind fastens it in place. Think of yourself as being courageous. See yourself as acting with courage in trying situations. Realize that there is nothing to fear, that worry and fear never helped anyone, and never will. Realize that fear paralyzes effort, and that courage promotes activity. The confident, fearless, expectant, I can and I will man is a mighty magnet. He attracts to himself just what is needed for his success. Things seem to come his way, and people say he is lucky. Nonsense. Luck has nothing to do with it. It's all in the mental attitude. And the mental attitude of the I can't or the I'm afraid man also determines his measure of success. There's no mystery whatsoever about it. You have but to look about you to realize the truth of what I have said. Did you ever know a successful man who did not have the I can and I will thought strong within him? Why, he will walk all around the I can't man, who has perhaps even more ability. The first mental attitude brought to the surface latent qualities as well as attracted help from outside. Whilst the second mental attitude not only attracted, I can't, people and things, but also kept the man's own powers from manifesting themselves. I have demonstrated the correctness of these views, and so have many others, and the number of people who know these things is growing every day. Don't waste your thought force, but use it to advantage. Stop attracting to yourself failure, unhappiness, inharmony, sorrow. Begin now, and send out a current of bright, positive, happy thought. Let your prevailing thought be, I can and I will. Think, I can and I will. Dream, I can and I will. Say, I can and I will. Act, I can and I will. Live on the I can and I will plane. And before you are aware of it, you will feel the new vibrations manifesting themselves in action. We'll see them bring results. We'll be conscious of the new point of view. We'll realize that your own is coming to you. You will feel better, 
act better, see better, be better in every way, after you join the I can and I will brigade. Fear is the parent of worry, hate, jealousy, malice, anger, discontent, failure, and all the rest. The man who rids himself of fear will find that the rest of the brood have disappeared. The only way to be free is to get rid of fear. Tear it out by the roots. I regard the conquest of fear as the first important step to be taken by those who wish to master the application of thought force. So long as fear masters you, you are in no condition to make progress in the realm of thought. And I must insist that you start to work at once to get rid of this obstruction. You can do it, if you only go about it in earnest. And when you have ridded yourself of the vile thing, life will seem entirely different to you. You will feel happier, freer, stronger, more positive, and will be more successful in every undertaking of life. Start in today, make up your mind that this intruder must go. Do not compromise matters with him, but insist upon an absolute surrender on his part. You will find the task difficult at first, but each time you oppose him he will grow weaker, and you will be stronger. Shut off his nourishment, starve him to death, he cannot live in a thought, atmosphere of fearlessness. So, start to fill your mind with good, strong, fearless thoughts, keep yourself busy thinking fearlessness, and fear will die of his own accord. Fearlessness is positive, fear is negative, and you may be sure that the positive will prevail. So long as fear is around with his, but, if suppose, I'm afraid, I can't, what if, and all the rest of his cowardly suggestions. You will not be able to use your thought force to the best advantage. Once get him out of the way, you will have clear sailing, and every inch of thought sail will catch the wind. He is a Jonah. Overboard with him. I advise that you start in to do some of the things which you feel you could do if you were not afraid to try. Start to work to do these things, affirming courage all the way through, and you will be surprised to see how the changed mental attitude will clear away obstacles from your path. And will make things very much easier than you had anticipated. Exercises of this kind will develop you wonderfully, and you will be much gratified at the result of a little practice along these lines. There are many things before you awaiting accomplishment, which you can master if you will only throw aside the yoke of fear, if you will only refuse to accept the race suggestion, and will boldly assert the I and its power. And the best way to vanquish fear is to assert courage and stop thinking of fear. By this plan you will train the mind into new habits of thought, thus eradicating the old negative thoughts which have been pulling you down and holding you back. Take the word courage with you as your watchword and manifest it in action. Remember, the only thing to fear is fear, and, well, don't even fear fear, for he's a cowardly chap at the best, who will run if you show a brave front. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.